we're going to talk a little bit about alcohol today. Uh, not that kind. Uh, this stuff is the kind of stuff that you would put in gasoline, like ethanol, uh, methanol. If you guys uh, have ever heard of, uh, uh, you know, drag racing, if you watch drag racing, they have cars. They're called alcohol funny cars because they run on alcohols, okay, methanol, uh, methanol fueled uh, funny cars, they call them, or those long, stretchy ones with the engine in the back, you know, which one of the big tires, the little tires in the front, parachute out the back, that kind of thing. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today, alcohols. Uh, and another group as well, but we'll get to that in a second here. So the functional group, what is a functional group? It's a special arrangement of atoms that is responsible for the chemical behavior of, um, of a specific type of uh, molecule here. Uh, in alcohol's case, um, there is a special uh, arrangement of atoms, which is the OH group. Um, and it's not, we have to be careful here, but it's not uh, what you know, we're used to, M20, for example. Uh, this OH group, of course, is just a molecular compound. So this is not OH minus. This is not hydroxide. This is not a metal and hydroxide. This is just the OH group. Uh, organic compounds that contain the hydroxyl group is what that is called, uh, is the functional group. Okay. So a couple things here. This is kind of what defines the alcohol there okay that is what makes the uh, makes it the alcohol or what why we call it that alcohol uh, functional group it's the OH part the R part here just so you guys know is basically just a, a chain of carbons is what that refers to chain of carbons and it could be uh, you know it could be a, a, a short chain it could be a long chain it could be a cyclical chain so it could be a, a, one of those cyclic hydrocarbons it could be one of those as well but it just basically represents the other part the carbon stuff long chain kind of thing and somewhere on there we're going to have an OH group attached and that OH group is what we call the hydroxyl group okay and we'll often refer to it as that so please know that to name and draw alcohols, there's really four, five types of things that go with that, or five rules, I guess you could say. Um, the parent chain has to include the carbon to which the hydroxide group is attached. So, yeah, the hydroxide, uh, the carbon has to be part. Of the OH has to be attached to a carbon uh, in the longest chain, basically, that you're going to pick out. So that has to be part of it. Uh, the name is going to end with an OL today. And there's going to be a number that represents where that OL or that hydroxyl group is attached to. So there's going to be a place where, like for example, it might be 2OL, which would indicate that that OH group is attached to the second carbon. So when we start showing you these, it'll become pretty obvious, guys. It's pretty straightforward. And we've done a lot of this stuff before anyway. Uh, so the name o ends with OL, and there's a number that needs to show the position of the hydroxyl group. The parent chain is numbered at the end closest to the hydroxyl group. So you have to start at the end closest to the OH group. And you can have more than one hydroxyl group added onto a chain. So if you had two, you have to call it a diol. And if you had three, you call it a triol. Okay. Um, and so on and so on. So you can have more than one OH group attached to that chain. Once again, since OH is kind of the main feature here, you want to start at the end closest to that OH group. Um, and there's some exceptions to that, which we'll talk about, but uh, basically that's how it goes. Branches are numbered as usual and named as usual, but remember, if you start at this end to get to the OH group quickest, you got to start at that end to get to the, uh, to the add-on groups, the alkyls, uh, alkyl groups there. Okay. So let's do a few drawings here, and we'll show you what this looks like here. Um, once again, as always, you're going to start at the end part here kind of thing. So butane to all. Butane tells me that I have four carbons. Butane, okay. The two and the ol, ol, tell me where, the, where that hydroxyl group is going to go. So on the second carbon, I'm going to have a hydroxyl group, okay. And that's... Pretty straightforward one example, but that's what that one would look like there. This would be, of course, filling the rest with H's, H, H2, and H3. Okay? All right. And the next one here is 2,4-dimethylpentan-3-ol. 
So once again, you want to start at this end here, okay? Penton 3 all. So they're telling you there's five carbon chain. On the third one, there's a hydroxyl group. So five carbon chain. On the third one, there's a hydroxyl group. I could have started at either end on this one. And then, of course, you're going to still tell me where the other stuff is here. It says 2,4-dimethyl. So 2 and 4 have methyls on them. And you can put those on the top or the bottom. It's up to you. But 2 and 4s have methyls. Fill in the rest with H's. And there you go. Okay. So those two are pretty, hopefully, pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, there's a couple more here we're going to do. C, uh, or this one here, 2-ethylcyclopentanol. So first things first here, of course. Pentanol, that's 5. You'll notice there's no number with this one for some reason. So that should kind of raise a red flag to you. Something's not quite right about this. Um, usually we need to put a number no matter where it is. But you also notice it's cyclo, right? So because it's cyclopentanol, we don't need a number because of course that's got to be carbon number one, yes? So cyclopentanol, we're going to start with, well, cyclopentane. And wherever we decide to put the OH, that's going to be group, that's going to be carbon number one, right? So there's cyclopentanol. And uh, what else do I need on there? 2-ethyl. So if that's carbon 1, uh, this will be carbon 2, for example. I'll choose to put it there. I could put it down there as well, as long as they're next to each other like that. That's fine. OK? Yeah? Yeah, ethyl's 2, carbon add-on. Methyl's 1. Not the number just tells you where it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next one here uh, is 33 diphenylhexane 24 diol. Uh, oops. Uh, so, let's see here. Once again, you probably should start at the back here part hexane 24 diol. In other words, and you'll notice that they did put the E back on here because you got two numbers here and then the diol as well. So, this is uh, hexane. Hexane, six carbons. Two and four have hydroxyl groups on them. So I'll start there, two and four. And three and three have diphenyls, or two phenyl groups on it. So phenyl looks like that, and phenyl looks like that. Okay. And once again, remember, if you're going to start at this end and call it 2 and 4, you've got to start at this end to put those on as well. Right? You can't start at the other end all of a sudden and decide. I'm going to switch it. So H3 here, I need one there. That's good. One there, two there, and three there. Okay? Good so far? No? Yeah. So really not that big of a difference, right? Just putting on, like I said, uh, putting on some uh, OH groups here. Next, we're going to name these. Okay, so once again, longest carbon chain with uh, OH attached to one of the carbons. So I can do this here. That's got an OH attached to one of those carbons in that chain. Four carbons in a row, that's but. Okay, so that's called uh, butin. Then also you got to tell me where that uh, hydroxyl group is. It's on the second carbon. You've got to start at this end here. It's carbon one here, so it's on the second carbon. So that'd be butin two all. And if I describe that also on the second carbon here, if this is second carbon. I got my two all here, and my two. I also have a methyl on there. So I'll call this two methyl, two methyl butin two all. Okay. 2-methyl butin 2-all. Next one here, longest carbon chain 
has to include the hydroxyl groups. So, okay, um, you cannot do this, and this is what we're this is what one of the rules says, and I think you guys know this, but you can't go one, two, three, four, five, because the hydroxyl groups are not attached to those carbons. Okay? So you can't do that, because how are you going to describe the rest of it as an add-on? You can't. Okay? So Obviously, I know you wouldn't. Most of you guys wouldn't pick that anyway because that's not the longest carbon chain. I'm just saying, if it was the longest carbon chain, that's not an option. Okay, um, you got to go one, two, three, four, five, six here, of course. So that's hexane. Uh, it's actually hexane because there is more than one hydroxyl group here, so we're going to call it hexane. And on the second and third carbons, we have diols. Okay. So we have those hydroxyl groups on the second and third, hexane, two, three, diol. And once again, I went with this here, right? Starting with carbon one there. So on the fourth carbon, I have an ethyl group. Yes. So that's this little ethyl group here added on. So four ethyl, hexane, two, three, diol. Okay. Because there's two of them, so you need to have the dial. Okay. Good. Questions? Yep. One more than one hydroxyl. Okay. Next. Physical properties of alcohols. Um, remember, once again, this is not OH minus, that's hydroxide. This is OH, just that non molecularly covalently bonded together with the rest of the other atom here, or other compound, I should say. The OH group is very polar. It's very polar because, of course, OH is actually what? Hydrogen bonding, yes? Uh, if you think about the difference in electronegativity between H and O, it's quite substantial, okay? Uh, it leads itself to hydrogen bonding, of course. Because it's got hydrogen bonding in those, melting and boiling points tend to be higher, right? You guys remember that from Chem 20? So they tend to be higher than, you know, a, a similar kind of compound without OH in it. So uh, OH is very polar. Smallest of the alcohols, like methanol and ethanol, are pretty easily dissolved in water, okay? Um, when you get longer, it becomes a little more difficult for that to take place. So as the hydrocarbon chain becomes longer, the nonpolar characteristics of the chain cause the larger alcohols to be less soluble in water. So basically solubility for the lower ones are really good, and as you get the chain longer and longer and longer, it tends to get overridden by the rest of the chain is really nonpolar, right? CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. All those are all nonpolar part. The only polar part, of course, is the OH part. So as the chain gets longer, basically the nonpolar characteristics take over, and they tend to be less soluble in water. So, like I said, small ones, very soluble, and as you get larger and larger, they become less and less soluble. Okay. Hydrogen bonding results in uh, higher melting boiling points. So if you had, for example, pentane, which is nonpolar, pentane, C, uh, C5H12, just carbons and hydrogens all the way around, nonpolar. And if you had uh, pentan one all, the pentan one all is going to have a higher melting boiling point because it's polar, right? It is London forces technically. So hydrogen bonding results in much higher boiling points than similar sized alkanes. So between, uh, as far as comparisons, pentane would have a lower melting boiling point. Penton 1 all or penton 2 all would have a higher melting boiling point, okay, because it's more polar London forces. Okay. Uh, hydrogen, or sorry, not London forces, hydrogen bonding, I should say, uh, for uh, alcohols, of course. Um, next is alkyl halides. Uh, alkyl halides are. Um, basically add-on groups that are, of course, made up of the halogens. So halides is another term we give to them, or halogens. That's group 17 stuff. So that's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. 
okay? Uh, organic compounds that contain at least one halogen or halide, okay, group 17 atom. Once again, you'd have a chain of carbons. So, chain of carbons, and this would be your halogen here, okay? So, basically, a long chain of carbons, and we're going to put on some halogen or halogens onto this carbon chain. To name those, pretty straightforward, really. You guys know all the naming for that already. The only thing is, you just got to be a little careful here. Halogens are named and located as branches. So, you name them just as a branch, basically, like methyl, ethyl, propyl, all that stuff. Same kind of thing, except you're going to change the wording a little bit. Instead of fluorine, we'd call it fluoro. Instead of chlorine, it's chloro, bromo, iodo. Okay? There's no frodo. So, that's Star Wars. Okay? So, well, let's uh, draw these here. 2,3-dibromo, uh, 3,4-difluoroheptane. Yeah, it's still got to be alphabetical, yeah. So here's your, um, where we're going to start here. we got heptane, so let's do seven carbons. Let's do it down here somewhere. Seven carbons. Five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, where are we here? And then I got two and three have dibromos, so bromos. Two and three. And three and four have fluoros. And once again, you can put these on top or bottom. It really doesn't matter. Um, either one works. That's fine. And fill in the rest with H's, of course. What's that? No. no. You know, I can only form one bond. Okay, so there's your 2,3-dibromol, 3,4-difluoropentane. Uh, let's do the next one here. 1,1-dichloro, uh, one, one 2-fluorocyclopentane. Cyclopentane, of course, is what we want to kind of look at here. Pent 5 cyclo So don't forget the uh, cyclo part of that, of course. So something like that. Uh, 1,1-dichloro. One, one I'm going to put my 1 here because I want to and you can't stop me. And 2 is a fluoro. I'm going to put that one down here. And cyclopentane. There you go. Okay. Um, that's all I would expect you guys to draw. I don't want you to draw anything else. But I do want to, to mention to you guys, listen, you know, if you have to come up with a chemical formula for this, remember, you got carbon, car I think this is kind of obvious, but carbon, carbon. So you got five carbons, yeah. Remember, carbon always has to make four bonds. So what's not here? A uh, hydrogen's not there. That's already got four around there. One, two, three, four bonds around that carbon. This one would have two hydrogens. This one would have two hydrogens. And this one would have two hydrogens. Right? So don't forget about those when you go and calculate number of hydrogens, carbons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Uh, next one here is, what do we got here? Uh, benzene. Benzene, of course, looks like this. And we got 1, 3, and 5 triiodo. You'll like them. Uh, Frodo. 1, 3, 5 iodo benzene. Okay. Don't forget benzene special. It's only C6H6. So on this one, that's, again, this is all I expect to see. That's all I want you to write. But if you're going to fill, finish this off, there would be an H there, an H, and one H there, right? That's it. There's no two for each one of these. Benzene is C6H6. And, of course, those extra electrons there are in the middle there being shared. <coughs> okay. All right. Moving on here. Naming. Well, let's see here. Longest carbon chain, four. So that's butane. Uh, let's start here, of course, because the add-ons are closest here. So two 
I have a bromine, and two, I have a methyl. We got to do alphabetical as always. So I'm going to go two bromo, two methyl butane, two bromo, two methyl butane, two bromo, two methyl butane. Two bromo, two methyl butane. Let's look at this one here. Oh, this one here. We got a little bit of a double bond right here. So let's see. You know, once again, what's the main feature of this uh, compound? Yes, there is fluorines and chlorines on there, and that's something I need to be aware of. Those are add-on groups, of course. That's not my main feature here. I would say the double bond would have to be the main thing because that I can write as you know the root of the name kind of thing right so let's see that's one two three four five six that's hex it's got a double bond so this is uh, hex three een is what that one is called so far okay either way you start here you're gonna get to the du that double bond at the third carbon so you, you got a choice in this case one two three four five you always want to use both double as possible. So let's start at the left side and go right. So I got a two here, chloro, and I got three and four fluoros. You still got to go alphabetical. So I'm going to go two chloro, and three and four difluoro. X3 and of course that would all be one word. Okay. Two chloro, three four difluoro hex three e. Yep. Three tells you where the double bond is. One two on the third carbon. One two three on the third carbon. Yep. Ein y n e. Okay. Now. Be careful with this stuff. Remember, if the double bond, okay, now you can only have one double bond, of course, but let's say the double bond was here instead. So if the double bond's there, you got to start on the right side, right? You got to get to the double bond quickly as possible. So this would be hex 2 ene. But remember, if I'm going to start here with 1 and this is 2, this is three, four, and five. You can't. You got to keep going in the same order, right? You can't be like, "Oh, I'm going to get the double bond quickest this way, and then I'm going to get to add my add-on groups quickest this way." No, you can't do that. Okay. If you decide you're going to start at the right, you got to start at the right for all of it, of course. And some of you guys are like, obviously, but just want to make sure. You know, you got to be careful. There's lots of little things here, like you forget a difluoro for the di part. It's going to be marked wrong. Okay, it's either right or wrong. There's no half marks here. Okay, um, you know you might forget the in part or something like that. So there's lots and lots of little things here that there you have to be aware of. Okay, so all right, <laughs> review time. Cha ching. Reminds you of that song. All right. The delta uh, heat of formation for 1,2-dibromobenzene is 121.4 kilojoules per mole. Sketch and label an EP diagram for this formation reaction. Well, I want to sketch and label a potential energy diagram for this. I need to have a balanced chemical equation for the formation of 1,2-dibromobenzene. Uh, so, I guess we should probably start with, well, if I want to make a formation, sure, I can do that but I need to know what dimobromobenzene looks like probably. So I would say, well, benzene. And I said, what was it? One, two, dibromo. There's a bromo in there, there's a bromo in there. Okay, one, two, dibromobenzene looks like that. Probably need to come up with a chemical formula for this. So I'd say C6, uh, H4, Br2. <laughs> would be a chemical formula for that. Okay. Formation 
But I want to write out the equation for the formation of dibromobenzene. Uh, I'd probably need some carbon. H4Br2. You probably want to balance it. Uh, let's go one step further here, since we're doing a little review anyway. I could uh, include the enthalpy change or the enthalpy associated with this reaction by putting it at the end here. This would be delta H notation right here. Delta H notation. Well, it says here the heat of formation for one, two, dive all in the per mole that I make. So I'm only making one mole here. So I need 121 for kilojoules. Okay. That would be called delta H notation. Yeah. There's two other ways to represent the equation. What's the other one? Part of the equation, so a, a term within the equation, which go on the left side or right side here. Left. Endothermic, yes. you got to put energy into this for this to happen. Left is the correct answer. You put that 121.4 on the left side of the arrow, yes. Okay. Endothermic, you need to put energy in. Uh, and the third type, of course, is your question, yes, which is potential energy diagram. Sure. So this is the first things we did in Unit 1, right? So let's go ahead and do a potential energy diagram. And here we usually put what reaction coordinate, basically kind of time, basically as the reaction takes place here. Um, we have, uh, do I start high or low for this one? Start low for endothermic. Okay, I don't know how much I'm going to need here, so just give me a sec. C6, or sorry, six Cs. I need uh, two H2s and uh, one Br2, I guess, right? And we're going to get C6H4Br2. And right here, you'd say delta H is a positive 121.4 kilojoules, yes? Yes, what? Good. All right, so that's the first part. So good review there, potential energy diagram. Um, like I said, so that's your three different ways, and of course, uh, we'll try and review some of that stuff here as we go along. Okay, good so far? You are only making, according to the balanced chemical equation, so remember, this is your balanced chemical equation. Based on this chemical equation, the heat of formation that's required for 1,2-dibromobenzene is 121.4 kilojoules for every mole of that that you make. Well, we're only making one mole in this balanced chemical equation, so I, I would need 121.4 kilojoules of energy. I would start with these things here, carbon, hydrogen, and bromine, and I would put in 121.4 kilojoules of energy to get my product here, 1,2-dibromobenzene. Okay? So, that's the balanced chemical equation. The next part says this. It says calculate the mass of hydrogen reacted when 350 kilojoules of, of heat is absorbed by the formation reaction. <coughs> well, there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just going to uh, write this out again here real quick, guys. Um, And uh, delta H here is positive 121.4 kilojoules. Okay, so we can use the formula that we used at this time. Um, it says basically this. How much high, but what they're asking here is, is calculate the mass of hydrogen that reacted if 
basically, when 350 kilojoules of heat was absorbed by this system. So how much hydrogen was also required for this? So they're saying here, what is the mass of this? How much hydrogen gas did I have to use to use 350 kilojoules here? Okay. And like I said, you can do that in numerous ways. I'll give you the formula one first, and I'll show you a little racial proportion thing that you could do as well. But this is the formula that we kind of used at the time. Okay. It's a formation reaction, so kind of that kind of thing there. Uh, delta H, if I had 350 kilojoules of enthalpy used here, if I had 350 kilojoules to put into this system, how many moles could I use, or how many moles of hydrogen gas would I use? Now remember this part here has to be the molar enthalpy of, not, not this, not this and not this, but this right here. I'm looking for the, basically, how many, what's the moles of hydrogen produced, right? Look, two moles of hydrogen gives me 121.4 kilojoules, right? Two moles goes with a 121.4, yes? To use two moles, I need 121.4. So, The molar enthalpy of uh, hydrogen, of course, would be divided by 2, right? 21.4 for every 2 moles. Well, how much would 1, right? And you can figure that out, of course. So 350 kilojoules. And this, I think, works out to be, what, 60.7 kilojoules per mole of the hydrogen gas. Dividing those two out. Okay, uh, by the way, this is, of course, positive here, positive here. Dividing those two out, so 350 divided by a positive 60.7 kilojoules per mole, and N works out to be about 5.66 moles here. About 5.667 moles or something like that. Or 766, sorry. Um, 766 moles, okay. That, of course, now I have how many moles of hydrogen gas I've used. I can use the molar mass. So those two combined together, of course, would give me the mass of hydrogen that I would expect to use here, which is 11.6, okay. 7.6 grams would be your final answer. Multiplying those two together, right? N times big M. Um, okay. Rounded uh, three significant digits because there's 350 in the question, so that's what I went with, 350, 3, 3. Okay. Now, once again, maybe, you know, but when we did these questions, I said, hey, look, you remember, it's stoichiometry, guys. If two moles of hydrogen gives me this, then 350 should give me how much here? You could set up a ratio proportion, which is another way I showed you at this time, you know, how to do this back then. I said, you know, hey, look, if 121.4 kilojoules for two moles of hydrogen if I gave you 350 kilojoules to use in this equation, how many moles of hydrogen would that be equivalent to? You could cross multiply and solve, because really that's the same thing, right? I know that two moles, I need 121.4. If I had 350, how many moles should I be able to use? Cross multiply and solve, you will get 5.766 moles of hydrogen. Molar mass, mass. All right. So you may want to do it that way. Doesn't matter. Okay. It's like geometry, right? It is quantitative relationship. Yeah? All right? So a little good review for that one as well. So that's eventually what we're going to do with that stuff.